Hey, 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 everybody. I uh, wanted to talk to you again about some of the things that are going on in the family courts and juvenile courts. I'm going to go ahead and invite some people on here um, that are making moves uh, in this movement and helping people around the world uh, to fight this battle. It should strike us as uh, interesting that we're actually having this battle around the world. So what I would like for you guys to do is I would like for everybody to uh, share this in your local Facebook uh, buy, sell, trade, yard sale groups, uh, the different groups that you use that uh, get a lot of people coming to them. I need you to uh, share uh, this video. Uh, of course, there's going to be some people who don't agree with some of the things that I'm saying, and that's okay. Um, but we can clearly see that there's a lot of wrong going on. There's a lot of people who are uh, losing their little ones, and there has to be a reason uh, behind all these things. People are breaking laws, um, and they're acting like the problems that we face do not exist. And that is where... Uh, our hope also lies, you know, is it's very easy to continue to do people wrong and to punish them uh, when people don't know what's going on. And so I hear everybody say, uh, let's go tell the governor, let's tell this guy, that guy, let's tell the president, let's tell this person, that person. But what I want to do is break it down and I want to look at some simple things today. And I want us to uh, grow today. I want us to realize that there's a reason why some of the people come into the movement and want to cause drama or make people fight or they get happy when they see people fighting. There's a reason. Because truly, when people understand what's really going on and people come together and people really stand on the truth, there's no force in this earth that can stop the people from having their way. And so what I want to do is go over some simple things. I'm adding some people on, so forgive me if I'm looking down. But uh, I want to talk about some simple things that will definitely help us to uh, be able to knock down this situation that's going on in this nation. And I really believe it'll happen. Uh, I just believe that we're going to have to do some things together uh, that probably has not happened the way that it should have around the nation. So uh, if you're on here, let me know. If you can hear me well, let me know, and then I'll get started and we'll uh, get to talking and break down some things that uh, really should uh, be able to shock the nation. So if you're on here, let me know. I'm getting ready to start talking. If you're on here, let me know. Say something. You can hear me well because we're going to get into some fire. This won't be a long video, um, but we're going to deal with some of the issues uh, that are happening with these courts. Um, they really have a big problem when they see that people are showing the truth. They're, you know, uh, they set up a grandpa to go to jail. And I think that it's going to be some foolishness with that. I think when we look today, it's going to we're going to see some things that are being done that are not legitimate. Um, but we're being deceived into having our little ones taken. Um, we're being deceived into believing that uh, these are judicial courts that are really working the way that a court should in order to give us a fair and impartial trial. Um, one thing that I want to hit on is something that we talked about before with Title 42 USC. Title 42 USC was never enacted into positive law, um, but this is what child support and uh, CPS is using as their justification and their authority for removing our little ones. Now, why is this important? Because there's contracts that uh, are in place with the CPS, with police, with attorneys, sorry, with your um, guardian at litems, with different people. And what you're going to find out is that when these people, and I'm not giving legal advice, I'm just talking about some of the things that we need to discuss as a family, all of us that associate with each other. 
Um, when we look at this Title 42 and the contracts that go along with it, if you look at Kenneth Cope Davis's uh, book on uh, administrative law and government, he lets it be known, I think it's the 1965 edition, um, that when you're working under these contracts uh, or at administrative law that the, the court fails to... Um, it fails to operate judicially. So when an executive branch is paying money uh, to the courts, and it, it's something that Lawrence Espinosa, he uh, posted not too long ago, I think it was him, where he showed like $350,000 or something like that, a payment that went to the Attorney General's office from DCS, which is Child Protective Services. When these organizations are getting money from the Social Security, our Social Security, which we already pay uh, these same officials publicly to do business, but they're getting money from Social Security in separate agreements. They're taking this money they're getting in separate agreements. They're paying the courts to work privately. This is what I want us to see and I want us to look at because when it, when it gets into our head and we really understand what's happening, that they're running private courts or star chamber type courts, this is where... Uh, we can really, really, really knock some stuff down. Good to see you, Danny. This is where we can knock some stuff down, but we got to make a promise to each other. See, it's funny in the scriptures, it talks about how a brother is made in adversity. And I understand now what that means. I don't care what your color is. There's so many people, uh, many who are on my page right now, who have become my brothers and sisters. And I have gained comfort, which doesn't make sense. In the, in the logical mind, I have gained, gained comfort even after my little ones have been taken away. My faith has grown where I know God is doing something. I see people coming together in a powerful way around the nation. And there's a fire over here and a fire over there and a fire over here and a fire over there. And I believe that when these fires unite and come together, we will move in such a powerful way that nobody, nobody can stop us. And so what I want to do is I want to continue to move forward and show things that are happening. And when we see these things uh, that are happening, we can become more educated. And here's the deal. Many of us know that something is wrong, but we can't always pinpoint exactly what's wrong. And I believe that when we start to get to the point that we can see the truth, and we can document the truth because really there's no truth uh, that we can use if we can't document it. See, we don't want to be like those who are coming against us taking our little ones. What they'll do is they'll say, oh, well, it is believed that mother is mentally ill and crazy. Dad is stupid and, and nuts because he threw his kid out the window. Uh, it's alleged that he threw his kid out the window, so he's not protecting his kid, so we got to take him. None of that stuff is, is given as 100% proof or evidence. They're just saying stuff. So we got to be the exact opposite. In order to effectively move the people, we have to come with truth. We have to show evidence of what it is that we're saying. So it may seem like things are moving a little bit slower than what it should, but really we're doing it the right way by bringing evidence to show the falsehood that's happening so people can see it and they'll catch on and say, oh, shucks, you're not just telling me these people are stealing kids for money. You're showing me these people are stealing kids. You're not just telling me that these people are doing shady stuff. You're showing me that these people are doing shady stuff. So I want us to think about something. Let's think about criminals who go and rob stores, right? When a criminal goes and rob a store, and I'm going to break down some stuff and I'm going to show you guys some proof, some hard proof, okay? You can go check it yourself in Arizona and see if I'm telling the truth. You can check it in your own states. But when somebody goes to rob a store, right, it's not normal for the criminals to go into the store and have their face wide open and uh, guns are blazing and, and going to rob a store. A lot of times you'll see they'll put a mask over their face. They might put some sunglasses on, put a do-rag on their hair to pull a stocking over their face, right? They try to hide their true identity. Why? Because they don't want the liability, okay? They don't want the liability. They want to rob people. 
but they don't want the liability. They don't want anybody to know because the cops are ran up in their house, <laughs> you know, and they might get shot. They might get, you know, uh, a long time in prison, you know. So these bad people try to hide who they are. Are y'all getting this? Can y'all hear me? Are y'all getting this? Now, this this is super important. So I want y'all to let me know that y'all getting it. Throw some thumbs up or likes or some, so I know we are on the same page and you can hear me still. Now, let's go from what the actual criminals normally do uh, in robbing a store to let's say criminals on the phone. So you got these people who call from this fake IRS scam and they'll call your phone and they'll say, hey, you know, uh, you owe us this much money. We need you to pay us. And uh, if you don't give us, you know, $10,000 right now, you're in trouble. Okay, how much can you pay? <laughs> you know, and you say, well, who are you? You say, oh, I'm Agent Billy from uh, the IRS. So they use a different name. Keep that in mind. They use a different name when they are trying to rob you. Now, a lot of people won't understand this because what ends up happening is, is that uh, the attorneys, I saw in Kenneth Cope Davis's book in 1960, I believe it was, his first edition, he explained how they were, he didn't, it don't seem like he meant to tell us this, but he explained in the first chapter how the new, the old attorneys who heard about the administrative law would think that it was going against the Constitution and it was stealing from the people and it was fraud and it was wrong and it was evil. But then he explained how the newer attorneys who've been trained to understand the administrative law would understand how it was kind of okay to violate due process and do all these different things because they've been trained. So what that tells me is, is that all the way back then that uh, the bar was preparing people for administrative law and to learn how to steal from the people using courts that uh, looked a little bit like real court, but it really was doing things that a court should not do. And it was working administratively, but they were deceiving people into thinking that it was real court cases. When the agencies brought you to court, he explained how you wouldn't even know where their policy manuals were. OK, so in these uh, courts that we're we're dealing with now or so-called courts, which are not courts, it's private businesses, like all of this stuff is like private. When you get into these private businesses, you'll find that DCS is paying the courts for court services. So they have people who are acting like judges, acting like your normal clerks, doing different things. And you would think that it's an actual court of record. You would think that it's a court that's going to give you an impartial trial. And it's not. Okay? It's not. The judges many times are just acting like clerks hired by DCS. I showed this in another video. Now, one other thing that I'm going to show you guys, and I need y'all to share this like crazy. One of the things that I'm going to show you guys is something else that they're doing. Okay? So I'm going to cover up one part of the document. But what I'm going to do is... I'm going to let you see a little piece of the paper. So right here it says, Honorable M. Scott McCoy, Judge of the Superior Court. Now here's what I want to ask you guys. Who in the world ever names their kid M. Scott McCoy? Who would name their kid with this in their name, M. Dot? Does that make sense? Can I get some feedback from you guys? Do you guys know anybody who actually has the name M as their first name. Have you ever heard anything like that? Now I know you could you could call somebody JT, but usually there's an actual name that they actually wear. All right. Now the funny thing is when you are looking to become an attorney, when you are uh, looking to practice law in a state, many times you will find that. Um, your Supreme Court in your state usually, and it could be the Superior Court, but what will happen is, is that they'll, uh, ad they'll let you be uh, admitted to practice law in your state. And in order for you to be admitted to practice law in your state, the court would have what is called a role of attorneys, all right? The state will have what's called a role of attorneys. Now, when you have a role of attorneys, uh, the role is actually the name that you are licensed 
to practice in. It's the name that you are licensed to practice in. Now, usually that name that you are licensed to practice in is your actual birth given name, your legal name. All right. Now, why is this important? I want you to think about this. If we go and open up a company, right? And now you think about, I think it was called the World Wrestling Federation back in the day uh, when uh, I believe they got sued um, and they changed their name. So let's just say their name was World Wrestling Federation. Now, my question is, is World Wrestling Federation the same thing as WWF LLC? So let's say if it was World Wrestling Federation LLC and WWF. F L L C and I might have been corporations, I don't know, or you know, incorporated, I don't know. But those two things are they the same? Because what happened was is they got sued, right? Once they got sued because little kids were jumping off of tables, doing backflips, breaking their necks, you know, getting hurt, you know, after watching these wrestlers who were faking things, they did the same thing. Little kids got hurt, they got sued, but they changed the name of the company. And just WWF, w, I think it's W.W.F. Dot, rather than World Wrestling Federation. Well, when you look at that, what they did was is just switch the corporation up by just changing the name. So rather than using the whole name, you might use an abbreviation. Rather than using the whole first word, you might, you know, shorten up the first word, put a dot, and then use the rest of the name because that makes it a different company a different entity so when you're licensed to do business by the state what it what ends up happening is is that you are licensed in a certain name and no other name all right but what we're going to notice is that uh when we look at these judges so-called and attorneys that are working in these cases we start to find out some really, 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 really strange things. And I want you guys to check this out and I want you to share it. So I'm going to show you in my own case. So when we look, I'll show you one more time. In the document, it says Honorable M. Dot Scott McCoy, Judge of the Superior Court. So this is the name that they're telling us is the name of this judicial person that seems to be a judicial person. But I want to see what his name is on the role of attorneys. So let's look at this. It says United States of America, Supreme Court, State of Arizona, role of practicing, role of practicing attorneys. Now, any person who's a judge also had to be an attorney. So watch this. It says we... And each of us do solemnly swear that we will support the Constitution and laws of the United States and the laws of the state of Arizona, that we will honestly demean ourselves in the practice of law, in the practice of law. So when they're practicing law, now watch this, and we'll discharge our duty to our clients in the best of our ability. So help me God. Okay, so this is the role of attorneys for Arizona. Now. The guy who is acting as a judge in my case, his name is Honorable, I mean, they call him the Honorable M. Dot Scott McCoy, right? So this is the guy who's making decisions, signing off on paperwork. Um, he is the person who is trying to make a decision in a dependency or a, uh, a dependency case or a, um, a, a, a case where he's trying to adopt out my little ones. But the funny thing is, this is one name in uh, on my court documents. But then when we look at what he was signed in as on the Supreme Court role of attorneys, the name is Michael Scott McCoy. He even signed Michael Scott McCoy. 52091 is when he got in. He was in Phoenix, Arizona. He was at 26 at the time from Phoenix, Arizona. Now, what you'll notice is, if somebody got the right to change their name, like Tara Kilby here, 7292, she changed her name. She came in at 3591. Her last name used to be Meyer. So in order to change your name and use a different name, you have to get permission from them and you have to show that you changed your name. Here's another one. 
Carolyn E. Miller is now Carolyn Kane. So it's showing the name that they're allowed to practice in. And if we look here, we'll see that I actually got this authenticated or certified. Um, you can see the raised seal on there. And it shows that this came, this is a true or correct copy. It came from the clerk of the Supreme Court of Arizona. Now, let's look one more time. The name that he's allowed to practice in is Michael Scott McCoy. Honorable M. Dot Scott McCoy. So what we see here is that the gentleman changed the name that he's using to practice in and he's signing court documents signing uh, signing things without using his legal name now is he the only one doing this well when I looked up uh, one of the attorneys in the case his name is uh, he's the one who brought the case forward with no injured party and uh, he he was the one who pretty much worked the case his name on the paperwork was Jared, J-E-R-R-O-D, Steele. But when we look at how he came into being an attorney and the role of attorneys, his name is Jared Jefferson Steele. Okay? When we look at the other judge who was working on the case, her name on the paperwork was Connie Contes. Okay? But when we look at the name that she was uh, licensed to practice law in, it was Connie Coin Contest. So what we find is, is that we got these people who are acting as if they're judicial persons, even though they're doing things that would put them in their private capacity and actually stop them from being able to make decisions in a court, which we need to see as a people. But they're bringing so-called court cases in names other than the names that they were licensed to practice law in. Now, why is this important? The reason this is important is because there was a Supreme Court case that showed that uh, body politics or political bodies, legislature and such, um, how they encouraged people uh, who were attorneys to bring cases in names that were not their proper person so that they could not have to represent them in the same way because if you were coming as a lawyer, you actually had to use the law and the rules of evidence and you had to do everything fairly and turn in everything. Where at the same time, there was what they call meritorious claims where it'll make meritorious means it makes money. They would bring a case that makes money and they would use a different name than the actual name uh, that they were licensed to practice law in. And then they would do what's called a mock trial to act like uh, you were really in a court when you were not. Now, it's deep because a gentleman named John Gentry, super brilliant guy who's uh, he's, he's turning in some, doc, uh, some writs to the Supreme Court, the, the top Supreme Court right now. And what I found about John Gentry is he was speaking about these mock trials and uh, we can see that the courts are working in its administrative capacity. It is not working judicially. And these people are working with private contracts to take your little ones and they're making money off of each and every little one that's taken. So you got to think about this. You got to think about this. Many people are saying, listen, we got to go to the news and tell the news. We got to we have to go to the president, tell the president, we got to, we got to tell Dr. Phil, we got to do this. We got to do that. I'm going to tell you guys something. Some of the biggest movements in this entire country, some of the biggest movements happened when people learned that it's about the people knowing the truth. The Boston Tea Party happened when people found out that they could stand up against evil. When the people came together and said, screw this, we're not taking this crap anymore. Who the heck you think you are? You're just like me. When we take the cape off of people, see, we've been trained to, to look at Superman and Spider-Man and, and Iron Man. And whenever they put their cape on, they were super powerful. They were perfect. They were amazing. They could do things that we never thought we could do.
And so we look at people who are political officials and we say, you know what? This person is wearing a robe in the front of this room, so therefore he must be perfect. Many people don't even believe in God and would see a man who's a priest wearing a robe. And they would say, okay, you know, this guy is just another man. But when we do it with public officials who are stealing our little ones, we get this respect or this belief that they're holy and righteous people just because they have a badge or just because they uh, are politicians with suits on or, you know, they're attorneys. You know, we make it okay for them to lie. We say, oh, well, you know, they're they're going to lie. They're politicians and attorneys. No. What we need to do is get serious and we need to understand that these people are running scams on us. If you're getting paid money, if you if you are getting paid money when things go wrong for people, then you have uh, a, a potential to, to use your power in the wrong way. And so when you look at a family court, the family court makes money out of chaos and people keep asking questions, but we got to, we got to think, you know, we have to use our mind because when you hear things like, oh, well, they keep giving the kids to the, uh, to the abuser and you're like, oh, shucks, is this just in this case? <laughs> you know, no, it's not. Think about it. In order to keep the title for money coming in. You need to stretch out the cases. That's why you got people doing three years of uh, services. Think about this. Child Protective Services is a business. It's a business. They're providing services. The people who are providing the services as their contractors are getting paid. But they're getting you to do the services at the barrel of a gun or by threatening you by saying, listen, if you don't do our services, you'll never see your kids again. You'll never see your kids again. Do we not understand that that's threats? We are the ones who are over the public servants. We are the ones who uh, direct our servants. But for some strange reason, we've gotten tricked because uh, tons of people who are in the bar have tricked people to believe that they rule and the people are under them. And so people are getting their little ones taken without warrants. People are... Uh, not getting due process and people are fearful and not knowing what to do. And, and what I want to do is I want to get us to think and understand that we shouldn't be doing all this bickering in any movement. We should not be fighting each other. We should be coming together and growing stronger and stronger and stronger. Now, understand this. People say, well, look, my kids are the ones that are taken right now. So I ain't trying to hear what you got to say because, you know, my, my kids are taken. I got to take care of my kids. Well, listen, my little guys are gone, too. I got four little guys gone, you know, four, four little guys that have been with me since they were little. I don't know where they're at right now, but I'm going to tell you what, I'm not going to sit here crying. I'm not going to sit here broken down. I'm, I'm not going to try to go beg the president. I'm not going to go try to beg, uh, po political officials or anything like that. I'll tell you once. And then after that, I'm just going to tell the people because when England tried to take over the United States or try to keep holding the United States, it was the people that fought back that stopped the foolishness. When the Boston Tea Party happened, it was the people that fought back that stopped the foolishness. OK, so when you get to the point, just look recently in Arizona. And I know some people don't like red for air, but, you know, the governor told the people, you know, in red for air, look, go back to your job or whatever. We're not doing anything for you. Just go. He just sh tried to shut them down and tried to just like force them. And, say, and then somebody came out and said, listen, we're going to sue you if you don't go back to school. It was striking teachers. We're going to sue you if you don't go back to school. What you'll notice is the, 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 the teachers didn't give up. They just said, forget it, whatever. When you back people into a corner where they have no other way to go, they will fight you with everything they have. And this is the point that we're at with this whole situation with Title Four D and Title Four E and all this, the, the political officials have learned to get paid out of their own paychecks that we pay out of our tax dollars. And then on top of that, they've learned how to go and get federal money and have a separate contract, a side business, outside of what we pay them, where they're taking it from our Social Security and they're paying the police officer, you know, the police, they're paying the doctors to help. They're paying the whole court system to help. They're paying the attorney general's office to help. And everybody, 
you know, working in their system is now working in their private capacity, but we think that it's all judicial, and it's not. Once you start working with Title 42, once you start working in private contracts, though you can't give out orders in the same way as if it's a judicial order where some judge was impartial and just said, hey, you know, uh, one person came to sue, one real man came to sue another real man, and now we got this issue, so now I got to figure it out, and you guys can't do wrong by each other. Uh, I'm going to have to open it up to share it, uh, Danny, um, and I can get that done in a second or once we get off. But um, the thing is, is that we got to understand that these people are not working in judicial capacity. Now, I understand that we do get some fear. We do wonder like, oh my gosh, can we take on something this big and can we make it? Oh my gosh, Nancy Schaefer did it and they shot her. Listen, there is no point in living in fear and in slavery. People are already stealing our little ones. People are already hurting us. People are already mocking us and laughing at us. You know, I had a, a person uh, who's a newscaster who actually said like she was okay with uh, if the federal government and, and different uh, political figures thought that something was okay with the kid, she was okay with them doing it even if they don't have a warrant. She's like, oh, people shouldn't have to wait around for the courts to be able to make a decision. I'm like, well, that's already existing. It's called exigent circumstance. You see somebody getting hurt, you jump in, no matter who you are, with a little one too. But if there's no proof of anything being done wrong, there's no judicial determination, you ain't take somebody to court and charge them criminally and prove they did wrong, you should not be taking their darn kids. As a matter of fact, Title 42 tells you that if you're going to take someone's little ones, that you need to either have a voluntary consent decree, meaning that somebody said, here, you could go ahead and have them, or you need to have a judicial determination, meaning that a jury of their peers made a decision that they did wrong and they broke the law, so they're going to get convicted. That's a determination. Not this whole thing where it's like, well, we believe that the parents might be crazy. We believe this and believe that. We got our concerns, so we just going to go take the kids. No warrant. We don't need that. And if you have a warrant, a warrant needs to have a bond. If you put out a writ, it needs to have a signature of the judge on it. It needs to have a seal of the court, and it needs to um, be signed by the clerk thereof. But what people are doing is these people are actually doing paperwork and not even filling it out and sending it out like it's a warrant to trick people. People are sending out documents that are not real court orders. Why is this important? It's important because we're being deceived by private businesses. Private businesses. And they're going around and they're making you think that they're still working in their official capacity when they're not. This is serious stuff. So we can't keep having this fear. We can't keep walking around begging for news to listen to us. Listen, we are the people, okay? We are the people. We are powerful. If you go back and look in the Bible, okay? Look at what happened in uh, Genesis when we see that the people came together in Babel and God had to confound their languages because he said, look, the people are one or the people is one. They're all together and nothing will be impossible to them. So that's what we got to do. That was in a negative way. God ain't going to go against something that's positive. If people want to come together and do good, he'll support us. But all I'm saying is we got to get rid of that fear. We got to get rid of this thing where, you know, we look at people and say, oh, well, you know, he's normally a judge. We, how many times have we seen judges go to jail in recent history, history for trafficking, for stealing women's panties out of their house, you know, all types of crazy stuff, social workers raping kids. We got to get to the point where we stop fearing these people and understand that they're people just like us. And we can't sit here and allow people to steal our little ones. I, from the beginning of the time my little ones got taken and they were with family, I talked and I'm still talking now. I haven't seen them since January. But I'm going to tell you what. My little ones are not, as, uh, are, are not any more valuable than your little ones. Okay? All of our little ones are valuable. So I'm not going to sell out and, and decide to shut my mouth because they might give me my little ones. And then you can't have your little ones. 
or they steal the little ones down the street. We got to come together. We have to decide to stand and be strong. We got to drop egos. We got to drop anything that's stopping us because people are coming and doing exactly what criminals do. They're writing different names than what it is that they were licensed to even practice in. That shows you that they know they're doing wrong. They're using private membership organizations and trusts to hide where the money is going. Okay? They're using private trusts to hide where the money is going so you don't know how they're getting the money from Title IV E and where it's going and who's dispersing what. We're not stupid. We know what private membership organizations are. We know what private membership associations are. We know that the state can't write any legislation against private membership associations. We know that. That's why the state can't prosecute the bar. The bar has to deal with the bar. Why? Because they're a private membership association. In the same way, these courts are running as trust running as private membership associations, we got to get this information, share it with each other, and we got to decide that we're going to make a stand. We got to decide that we are going to look out for each other. We got to decide that we're going to fight for each other. We cannot keep making these decisions to fight each other on Facebook, to talk down to other advocates, to find a way to expose every advocate in the world. Because that's what some people do. Some people are looking to just expose everybody and say that everybody's against them. Everybody's bad. Everybody's wrong. We don't have time for that. We need to stand and come together. Now, one thing that I will tell you if you're in Arizona right now, uh, in Arizona, because uh, the legislature was known before we even became uh, a state to sell legislation. And the judicial branch was known to sell uh, their judgments for people who would pay them off. So they were known to be crooked. So we have some laws in Arizona or, or, or parts of our constitution that allow us to do some things that other people can't do or other places can't do. One of the things is we're able to recall judges. Now, there's a special website that's out there I put out there. It's called azrecalljudges.com. I'm putting it out there, letting y'all know. It's a good website, azrecalljudges.com. Let's start going and removing them for stealing our kids. Forget begging. You know, we could beg the legislature all day. But when it gets to the point that we stand up and say, okay, this is the game you're going to play. If, if our kids are the, this valuable to you that you're going to keep stealing them, we're just going to make sure you get removed off the bench. We'll tell everybody what you're doing. The people are not going to play when they know the truth. And so I'm asking for people to stand up, share this, share it like crazy, show the truth. You see that I just showed you where the judge, two judges, um, I didn't show you the information for both, but you can go check it, check up on me and see if I'm telling you the truth from the Supreme Court of Arizona. I showed you one. I told you about the attorney wearing a different name. There's another attorney using a different name. Let's every one of us go check in our own state the judges and the uh, case, I mean, the uh, attorneys working in our cases. Let's see if they're using the name that they practice up under. Don't let the courts tell you that they don't have a role of attorneys. Somebody got the role of attorneys. Supreme Court usually has it. Let's start checking up on these people and let's come together with fire. Now, this is huge information. If people are not working in their private, per, uh, private person, I mean, their uh, if they're working privately and they're not working in their proper person, then what ends up happening is, is that we can clearly see that uh, they're not working in their official capacity. Their decisions mean nothing. They're void. They're working privately as a private business with side contracts. If you're working with side contracts, your orders are null and void. So they're deceiving us to think that we got our rights taken. They're deceiving us to make us believe that we owe them some child support money and those orders are void. I know people right now who have got their orders voided. Okay, I can tell you on YouTube where you can go look at the guys and see their paperwork where they got their orders voided and many other people over this same bull. Okay. It's time for us to stand up and educate each other. It's not about who's the smartest. It's not about who's the coolest. It's not about who knows the most. 
we got to come together and make sure that all of us are secure in our minds knowing the scam that is happening so that we can stand up as a unit. We can stand up as a team. Now, I'm going to tell you this. I'm praying for your little ones. I'm praying for the ones that were affected in your life. You pray for the ones that are affected in my life. Pray for the ones that are affected all over the world. Let's get back to the point where we come together and love each other and treat each other like family because we got an enemy that's homegrown that has learned how to make money off of our backs. Learn how to make money off of our little ones and they got to keep drama going. They got to keep problems happening in family court in order to keep making money. And that and and that juvenile court is not a court, okay? It's not a court. They got their own rules, they're doing their own thing. It's not a court. It's administrative, okay? So we got to get to the point where we understand what's happening and we fight for each other. I pray to God that you can hear this video. Um, everything was clear. I pray to God that uh, we're on the same page. I pray to God that you'll go check your role of attorneys and your court paperwork. Look at your court paperwork. See if the judge, so-called, and the attorneys, so-called, are using the same name that they are practicing in on the role of attorneys. These people are doing mock trials. They're acting like you're in a courtroom and you're not really in court. As a matter of fact, they don't even care about finding you guilty of something in most cases. Okay? They're trying to find a way to get you to believe that you're going through this hectic process and they got power over you when they don't. A lot of times they just want you to sign a contract, sign that safety plan so they can make you believe that uh, you're you're in trouble, you know, and we got to make sure that the kids are safe. They're not worried about your kids being safe. Kids are more likely to be hurt, seven to ten times more likely to be hurt inside of CPS care. So why would you believe that these people really care if your little ones are hurt? These people are taking little ones and putting them in sex trafficking homes. These people are taking little ones and losing them. How could you ever believe that these people really care about what happened to your little ones? Now, I'm not talking down on anybody. I'm not talking down on you. I understand you're going to feel pain. I understand you're going to be hurt. I understand there's going to be confusion. But listen, these people are making a business privately out of taking your little ones. These people are working in different names many times than what they got licensed to practice law in. So if somebody, that's the unauthorized practice of law. You can't be two persons. You can't be uh, John William Henderson and J. Dot William Henderson and practice law in a name that you did not get licensed in. That's like going to the state, getting licensed to do business, and then working with people in a different name, hiding your identity. This is bull. This is wrong. And this is what's being done all over. Uh, to take our little ones. People using different names. Judges not signing stuff. I mean, look at this filth. Let me see if I still got the uh, paper out. Judges not using their name to sign off on your paperwork. Let me see if I can show you an example. Look at this. This is so-called given in open court, right? Where, where, when? Look at this. Done in open court. 2017. Honorable. This is what they gave us in court. Where the heck is his name? Where is his signature? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? People want you to believe you're going through court, but they don't want to sign stuff. There's people who said they had their kids adopted who never even seen an adoption order. They never seen an order that said that the kid was adopted. And a lot of times they're signing it in a different name than what they were able, what they practiced law in. Here's another one. I just showed you. Look at this name. I'm going to do it one more time. Honorable M. Dot Scott McCoy. Who the freak has a name M. Dot Scott McCoy? That ain't your name. Let's see. Supreme United States of America, Supreme Court. Wow, that's even kind of strange. United States of America, <laughs> Supreme Court, State of Arizona. That's really, really, really strange. Um, watch this. Role of practicing attorneys. Let's look. Michael Scott McCoy. That's the name that was allowed to practice law. This is not the name that was allowed to practice law. So when we look, this gentleman signed off on the order so-called to remove my little ones with a name that he never even got 
license then. Come on, you huh? It's full of deception. People want us to believe. Look, people don't have the right to take your rights away. How does somebody take away your rights? Okay? You got to think about that. How does somebody take away rights of a man or a woman? They're not bringing you to court. It's not a jury of your peers. And somebody tells you they're removing your rights because they just said so. It's an administrative court. They got to do a lot of little sneaky stuff to deceive you into believing that it's a real court. They got to put somebody in the front of the room and act like they're acting judicially. So you believe that they're getting you. Listen, with the Boston Tea Party, right? Somebody could come to you and say, oh, we're taxing you this much for tea. We're taxing you this much for tea. You're going to pay us for this tea this much. What makes the change? The thing that changes everything is when you get it in your mind and say, wait, this is a freaking scam. They're robbing us. They're taking this huge percentage of our money for some tea. This tax is outrageous. You know what? We're tired of this. Let's freaking throw the tea over the boat. <laughs> You know, they threw the tea over the edge. What happened then? People realized like, oh, shucks, we're not going for that. When you get to the point where you understand the trick that they're doing and you say, wait, this is a scam. You, you act like you're taking me into a judicial court, but you got a side business going on where not only are we paying you your normal income, you got a side business where a private company is taking our little ones, getting paid government from the Fed, for getting paid from the feds who are acting as a private business because it's coming from the executive branch to the executive branch in the state and money is funneling down. And well, here's what's funny. Look at Title 4D. We find out that there's a matching in Title 4D. They'll tell a man, you got to pay $500 in child support as a non-custodial parent. Then they'll go to Social Security and take $500 and match it, right? So we don't know behind the scenes there's $1,000 coming out. So when they give these outrageous amounts of money in child support to a non-custodial parent or a parent after they steal your kids from you, they say, oh, well, you got to pay us this much a month. They don't tell you that, oh, shucks, and we're getting the same amount from Social Security. And then the state actors take 66% of that, but... Nobody ever tells us about the other 34% too. Where is that going? Is that staying with the federal government or players in the federal government? See, this is why people don't want to acknowledge what's happening. Because there's people who are making money all around from our Social Security and they're telling us, you won't have Social Security when you get older. It might not be there. Well, you're taking it out of my paycheck, so why might it not be there? That, that attorney, there was an attorney from Chicago or Illinois who told, oh, well, if we give kids and parents equal parenting time, the state could lose millions or hundreds of millions of dollars. He told you what they were doing. The Social Security money that they get that goes to the state is not for the best interest of the child. The money is simply to put money inside of the uh, treasury. So these people who work for the state are getting paid from us for taxes, but they also got a side business where they're getting money directly from the Title 42, uh, I mean the Social Security Act. They're getting money sent directly to them and they're splitting the money up and they're doing some little shady stuff and they're making, they're double dipping, getting paid twice. Are we seeing this? They're not just getting their money back. Then they, they got the nerve to say, oh, well, our courts are courts of equity. Well, the maxims of equity say that if you're going to, uh, you know, um, one who is like pursuing equity must do equity. So you must come with clean hands. So you can't say, hey, equity is you owe me $50 because I took care of your kid and spent $50. They'll fool around and get $10,000, $50,000, $80,000, $100,000 hit their account. And they spent a couple thousand dollars. That's not equity. You don't have clean hands. You're stealing the little ones and making statutes to allow you to be able to take the little ones and then you put out a little bit of money from your investors and your partners and from the state and then you get this ridiculously huge amount of money and y'all split the money up and y'all just making tons of cash. You're paying the court to do your to do your bidding. So the executive branch is bringing all the evidence. They're bringing reports to the court. How the heck do you have a court report where you're bringing in all the evidence and because you're an agency, the judge believes you? And then they look at the parents like they're crazy, but the parents, out of their tax dollars, are paying the courts to be able to function. But then DCS or CPS comes in 
and they're paying the courts to so-called go into equity, but they're getting much more money than what they could ever put out. It's a business, y'all. It's a business. So I'm asking everybody, let's come together. Let's stand together and fight. Let's stand together and fight. If you're in Arizona and you're tired of people taking your kids, I'm going to put the, the site up on my page. It's azrecalljudges.com. azrecalljudges.com. Let's start removing these people off the bench, okay? I'm showing you this one gentleman using a different name than what it is that he was licensed to practice as. I'm showing you attorneys that's doing the same thing. Let's start with him. Let's let's say, hey, you want to take my little ones? Okay. You do whatever you want to do. I'm not going to hate you. I'm going to do right by the people. I'm going to tell the people what you've done. And what we're going to do is we're going to give them fair chances. We, we can put out paperwork and say, hey, did you do this? Are you using the name that you, you, you came in as? Uh, did you tell parents that you don't care about the Constitution? Did you call parents constitutionalists when you should have been uh, looking at their rights that the Constitution uses to, to restrict your behavior? See, Constitution is not restrictions for us. It's restrictions for government officials. Did you call parents constitutionalists and say something is wrong or as if something is wrong because they believe in the Constitution? You know, do you have a, a problem with parents who don't go along with your uh, your your so-called um, court that's really an administrative hearing, uh, a place for administrative hearings, or is not fully judicial because you're using Title Forty Two, you're using statutes, you're doing stuff that is not a court of record. That's the problem. So here's the deal: Are we going to stand up together and move and fight? Or are we going to give up? You only got two choices. You know, I've lived a good life. I thank God for everything that he's given me. I understand now he's calling me to do battle. Okay? He's causing. He's calling me to make sure that people know the truth. And while we got uh, people in the news laughing at us, you know, the lady, you know, the other day, she's like, hey, you know, is this conspiracy theory? Uh, you, you believe in a conspiracy theory where the government officials and police and other people are coming together doing wrong? I'm like, no, I don't believe in a conspiracy theory, but I do believe in co uh, collaborative agreements where I can show you the documents that show that they're coming together, working, doing a business, and everybody's getting paid. And in order for the state to get paid, they have to get all the pieces of the puzzle and bring it together and make sure they got people contracted to do all the work. That's the police work. That's the social work. That's the foster care homes, that's the foster care boards. There's all these stakeholders that come together in order to do this business and this enterprise. All right. So if this makes sense to you, I'm going to go ahead and make the video able to be shared. Let's make it viral. One way that we can do that is share it in all of your local yard sale, buy, sell, trade, barter, uh, all those different types of groups. Now, I know this video went kind of long, but uh, let's go ahead and uh, get this thing shared and let's let the people know we can clearly see that there's a possibility that these people are not just working privately, but working privately and using different names than what they were licensed to do business in. So if you're licensed to do business in your proper name and you're using a different name to sign off on people's judgments and different things like that, and you're getting hired by DCS and you're working privately and you're doing court cases based on statutes and you're, you're ripping people off, um, that could be a big problem. All right. So let's start checking the attorneys to see if they're on the role of attorneys with the same exact name that they're using on your paperwork. If that name is changed, we got a problem. And the people need to come together and educate each other because there's a lot of little sneaky tactics that they do when they're trying not to have liability for running their private business. OK, because I'm going to tell you what is shown in law that when judges are working in their private capacity, when courts, uh, court officials are working in their private capacity, police officers are working in their private capacities, they have no immunity, okay? You have no immunity in your private capacity. And when you're trampling people's rights, you have no immunity. So let's stop believing that these people are always judges. They're acting as judges all the time, all right? That's good stuff, Linda. I appreciate you for being here. You too, Danny. You guys are powerful and amazing and you know, I just want to I want to thank all of you, uh, Lucida. I want to thank you, uh, 
like I said, you guys are powerful, and you guys, uh, James, Holly, uh, you guys are allowing us to be able to move forward in this world. And I can feel your pain. I can feel your hurt. I can feel your sadness. You know, I know a lot of times, um, you know, people are even to the point where they're going to break down. You know, and I want to just tell you that you know I love the heck out of you. You're family to me now. You know, and so we just got to be strong and help each other. We got to love each other. We can't see color. We can't see age. We can't see any of that stuff. We just got to get to the point where we give each other a chance. We fight for each other because really it's not about us. It's about the little ones. You know, our future can go down the drain because these people are taking the ones who are our future preachers, our future leaders, our future doctors. They're taking them away. Okay. And so you're important. You're valuable. I don't care what's happened to you. I don't care what people said about you. I don't care if you did make a mistake. You're still valuable. You're still important. You still have a purpose. You still got fire inside of you. You can do powerful things. Don't doubt. Believe. Know that things are going to change. Y'all can't feel it. You could feel it in the atmosphere. You could feel it in the air. People are fighting across the nation. People are turning kids back in. People are getting recorded. They know they're in trouble. People are sitting in courtrooms. You don't think they know that we're coming. You don't think they know that we're serious. You don't think they know that it's getting out of hand for them. They can't keep doing what it is that they're doing. They can't keep pushing against us. Listen, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid in the same way that the bar has worked these little sneaky tricks in and changed things so that they can take our little ones. I'm going to tell y'all what. In the same way that they did it sneaking over 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 years, when the people get serious, when the people get upset, when the people get a moving, things move fast. I'm telling you real fast. It'll be like one day. You'll go to sleep, you'll wake up, and you'll realize the whole nation and turn around. All right? And that's right. It's our time now. We've been fighting for so dang long. People have been in this movement for 30 years, 20 years. And I'm going to tell you what. The thing is, is that it's not about telling the politicians. It's not about telling the president. It's about the people standing up, seeing the facts, knowing the truth. Every time we bring something to somebody... Bring evidence. Show them the paper. Make the paper the proof. Make the evidence the proof. Let them see the stories. Let them see the news articles. See, people do, a lot of times they don't want to hear when we try to tell them what's happening to us. They're like, oh, well, you must have did something wrong. You, you must have made a mistake. No, this is happening all the way across the nation. No, there's private agreements. And I have somebody who's a, who works with the news tell me that, hey, no matter how many documents you show, hey, it, it really don't matter if the, if the federal government and other people feel that kids are in danger. That's what it is. Listen, we're not playing this game anymore where we say the best interest of the child when kids are getting raped in foster care and killed seven times more likely to be hurt than what they are in their own homes. You're not going to keep playing that game with us. And we're not going to be evil. We're not going to be mean. We're going to speak to people like we have sense. We're going to respect people, but we're not going to just take no for an answer. We're not going to play games with bull. We're not going to be ran away. We're not going to be intimidated. Why? Because there's fire inside of every single person who's going through this. You got pain. You got a missing part of you, but you can make up for what you're missing. You can. And the thing is, is this. Anytime somebody commits fraud to take something from you, there is no statute of limitations on fraud. The only thing that makes you think that you can't get your kid back who's been adopted out is that somebody told you something, some rule somebody put on paper where they say, oh, well, uh, after this many years, you can't get your kid back. Screw that. You're not going to tell me how many years I can get my kid back in or my, my, my little one. This is foolishness. How is somebody going to write a permission slip for somebody to steal your little one? Come on now, y'all. This is what you think. When somebody comes and they write a permission slip to say that you're able to do wrong, you're able to rob somebody, you're able to steal. Look, Hitler wrote permission slips for people to kill people. What happened to them? That didn't turn out well, did it? Those people who were order followers who did wrong got in trouble. Let's get to the point where we see the truth, share this stuff, let's talk to people, encourage each other, and I'm telling you, you're going to find out. If we push hard and we get everybody to get involved, 
They're going to find this movement is going to grow extremely fast. People are going to start to love and care about each other. You're going to see people helping each other who don't even know each other. You're going to see people who are hungry and out of money because the legal system have punished them and made sure that they didn't have money to eat and money to do the things that they needed to do. And you're going to see people sending money across the nation to help each other. You're going to see the people stand up and the people become firm. And then what's going to happen is that in one day, I promise you, one day, and it ain't going to be long if we fight, in one day, the nation is going to come together and people are going to turn and realize, like, wait, you stole our little ones. You're in trouble for this. And you're going to see that they're going to have to return thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of kids just like they had to in the East Coast just recently. In the East Coast recently, I think it was the East Coast, the article came out where it showed that thousands of people had to get their kids back because they were illegally taken. You think there's any difference in anywhere else in the nation? No. They're illegally taking kids. They're making threats. Hey, if you don't sign this paper, you will never see your kid again. Uh, that's fraud. You just destroyed the whole contract. This is what they're doing. They're telling you if you don't sign the consent decree, if you don't sign the safety plan, we're stealing your kids from you. Oh, if you don't sign it, we're going to get the police to come kick your door down and, and harass you and hurt you. And then people give their kids up. This is what's happening to the people. You didn't get your little ones taken fairly. Nine times out of ten, nobody brought you in front of a jury. And the jury said, oh, yeah, they did wrong. They hurt their kids. Yeah, we need to throw this person in jail. You know, throw away the key and take the little ones. That did not happen. The law of the land. Go back to Lord Cope. Do some study. The law of the land meant that the people made a judgment. Your peers made a judgment if you did right or wrong. We're not getting that. Why? Because the bar has learned to sign laws in. See, we got a monopoly in our nation now. The bar. See, it used to be that regular people would say what's right and wrong based on common sense. Now the bar says, we're going to tell you everything that's right and wrong. You're going to believe everything we say. We're going to make up 10 million laws so we can get you for every single little one. And when you do what we don't want you to do, we're going to take your kids. We're going to take your money. We're going to take your house. We're going to take your car. This is what's happening. People have learned how to trick the system or, or abuse the system and set it up so that they can take your little ones based off of what they write call statutes, which is not the law. They're not taking you into courts of law where a jury is saying, uh, did these parents do right or wrong? As a matter of fact, when they tried to use jury jury trials inside of uh, family law in Arizona, I can show you in the Pima County Guardian of Lightning book, they said, look, we got rid of that because the only ones who liked it was parents. Yeah, why? Because the jury would not allow you to steal other people's little ones off some bull crap. But that's what's happening now. These people come and call you mentally ill, make a make a... A uh, uh, medical diagnosis as a dang social worker with no medical license, the fake judge who's working as an administrator, who's working as a um, clerk for the agency for superior reviewing purposes, will actually make an administrative decision that he believes that they're right and you don't even realize that he's working with them and they already paid him. Okay, They paid money to the court for court services. All right? So they're paying for an outcome. They're paying tons of money from your social security to take your little ones. And they're not telling you, hey, uh, you know, we're not really working in our normal court procedures. We're actually working with a side contract that the social security, uh, we're getting money from your social security to take your little ones. And uh, yeah, we do actually have a conflict of interest, but because we're not really working in a court, we can make up whatever rules we want to. It's not, a, it's, not a, it's not a normal court. It's not a court of record. So the judge can actually be taking money and, you know, making profit off of the cases privately and be working as a judge at another time in his official capacity. And we're thinking that we're in court. We're sitting up there trying to say, look at all this evidence I got. They don't give a darn about the evidence. I showed y'all in the Pima County Guardian at Lightning Handbook. They don't care about evidence. They don't care if you're uh, guilty or not. The only thing they're trying to do is take the little ones because that makes them money. That makes them profit. And they'll stretch out the services for as long as they can because that makes all their partners money. They're always going around talking about the stakeholders. The stakeholders. Stakeholders is what you have in enterprise. What you have in big business. All right? So when they're talking about these stakeholders, they're getting money off of taking your little ones. All right? So 
I showed you clearly that people are coming to court, uh, this so-called court, and the attorneys and the judges many times are using different names than what they were licensed to practice in and what the, I'm sorry, what the uh, Supreme Court allowed them to practice in. I just showed you on my own documents, the Supreme Court of Arizona, uh, my, the, the so-called judge who so-called wrote the order to say that my little ones were going to be, uh, they didn't say sever my rights. They can't even say that. Uh, the, the Supreme Court, uh, Troxel versus Granville, uh, Sandra Day O'Connor let you know that the state can't get rid of your right. So that's not what they were doing. And and your your right to your little ones is a fundamental liberty interest. They can't just take that from you. But this guy signs off M. Scott McCoy. And that's not the name that he was licensed to practice in. I showed you all. You can go back and check the video. You'll, you'll be able to see it. He was licensed to, he was admitted into the practice of law by the Supreme Court in the name Michael Scott McCoy. Why is he using a different name on people's paperwork? Why? Probably because he don't want the freaking liability and they're working privately. Because he's working in a different capacity, you don't want to write your real name on there and your actual signature of the name that you were licensed in. Because if people, if, if people find out, it's going to be hell to pay. And people have found out. So go check your attorneys, check all your lawyers, check all the judges, see regional contractor service committee meetings and members expose all the players. Google for your area and region. All right, that's fire, y'all. Linda's giving y'all information. So go check your judges, check your attorneys in your cases, see if they're using the same name that they were uh, admitted to practice law in by the Supreme Court in your state. Also, look at the, um, just look at what's going on. It's simulated legal proceedings. Look up John Gentry. Um, they have a, a, a page. I, I hope you can find them on Facebook. Um, there's a lot of guys who are, who are getting involved. But listen, y'all, we got to come together. I beg all of you, take this video, get 10 people to share the video with, and get them to get 10 people to share the video with. If you do that, this thing will grow exponentially across the country and people get the information they need quickly. People want to see the documentation. People want to see information. And when they do, I promise you it's going to be one day that the people are going to look up and they're going to realize, oh, shucks, we're being robbed. And when we do, I promise you things will change and it will be quick. It will be quick. And yes, it is obvious collusion. Big Lawrence Espinoza uh, he showed a lot of collusion. He even showed where they were collaborating in their own documents. This is true. They are colluding together. This is not the best interest of the children. This is who can make the best interest off the children. I promise you. That's exactly what it is. All right? So let's be strong, y'all. Let's love each other. Let's care for each other. I promise you. The, 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 the doors are opening. God, God is blessing us and giving us good opportunities and he's showing what's happening. The doors are opening. The floods are about to be uh, uh, bursting open. Okay, The dams are going to break open. I promise you, just fight. Keep the fighting. You don't give up. Go hard. Go as hard as you possibly can. Right now, when it, when it gets to the point you get tired a little bit and, and you get nervous a little bit, you get scared a little bit, don't quit. Don't give up. Fight harder. Right now, I promise you, the door is about to open. And I'm not making no vain promises. I'm telling you we can see things happening. I'm telling you that the power is in you, the people. God has given you power to be able to stand up and talk and to do what it is that we have to do to break this thing down. You have the power. I'm not telling you something that we haven't seen in history. When brave people got up and fought with everything they have, when they exposed the truth, when they shine the light on darkness, big things happen. We just forgot who we are. We forgot that we're the people. We forgot that we were on the government. The people created the government. The people created the Constitution. The people give these people the power to be able to sit in our buildings and do what they, ha do, what they do. So let's not look at them as if they're somebody great. They are our employees, all right? You don't let your employees tell you what to do, all right? You don't do that. 
So let's get to the point where we stand as one and do what it is that we have to do. Share this video. Let's get serious, y'all. Let's get our babies back. They're coming home, okay? Our babies are coming home. And, and, and if something has happened bad to one of the little ones you have, I'm sorry for it. And like I said, I'll be praying. I love the heck out of you. I care for you. And, and, and just fight, okay? Don't let it be in vain. You got put in this position for a reason. You got some power inside of you that has to be unleashed. We need that light that's inside of you. We need that power that's inside of you. We need that pain. We're going to take that pain and we're going to turn it to motivation. We're going to turn it to fire. We're going to turn it to drive. Look, there is nothing in this world like a woman scorn, okay? A lot of you women have been hurt. You've been through pain. Don't let that die. Don't let that fire leave you. Don't give up. I know you got tears that come out of your face, but you make something powerful happen for what it is that has been done to you. <clears throat> for what it is that has been done to your little ones. Push with everything you got. You got power inside of you. You're tougher than you think you are. All right? Stand up and let's get ready to move. And if there's anything I could do to help. Now, I don't know everything in the world. I'm not a, a legal genius I'm starting to get to the point where I want to run away from the legal stuff because I understand that a lot of it is just done on fraud. But what I understand is, is that there's power in the people. Then I'll be there for you and you be there for me. But let's get together and let's start bringing justice, okay? Let's start fighting for our little ones. Let's not let them suffer uh, longer than they have to. And I promise you, you know, I, I promise you on everything that I know <laughs> and love, that God can turn this thing around. Let's just stand up and fight. All right. Let's just stand up and share. Let's just stand up and do our part. Keep moving. Keep growing. Keep telling other people. Don't think that you telling one, two or three people ain't going to do nothing. You tell one, two, three people. You tell five people. Tell them to tell the same amount. And I promise you, before you know it, this stuff will be all the way across the earth. Okay. All the way across. And then I'm telling you soon. Some powerful stuff will happen, but don't give up. Let's move. No fear, no doubt. All right? No fear, no doubt. Let's move. I love all y'all. Thank you.